Hello AWS friends, in this tutorial let's have a look on AWS Fargate. So I have already some videos on my YouTube channel about ECS. Um, I think two videos, one explaining ECS, the other one explaining a code pipeline for ECS. I have some videos about Kubernetes, also Kubernetes um, with COPS and also a video on EKS but not so far on Fargate. Fargate was launched in late 2017 as the next evolution step to ECS. So if you know ECS, which is a highly scalable, high performance container management service that supports Docker containers and allows you to easily run applications on a managed cluster of Amazon EC2 instances, you will also be interested in Fargate. So meanwhile, you have to use EC2 instances in uh, ECS and you have to define a cluster. You have to think about the instance types, the cluster size in Fargate. You don't have to bother with this anymore. So you don't have to define the cluster. You don't care for the EC2 instances. You just can focus on your services which you want to run, so these are defined by task, task definition and services. So let's get started, let's have a look on how to install a Fargate cluster and a microservice in AWS. You will find um, all resources to do this your own in my GitHub account, here are the links, you find a also this readme and this repo, though this is my github account and in AWS advanced you find a lot of topics and also ECS Fargate. We're gonna have a short overview, we're gonna build a simple microservice app and gonna push this to ECR and then we're going to create a Fargate uh, ECS cluster with a Fargate services by CloudFormation. So the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of service. Of, of course you wanna run in a Docker container or on ECS on Fargate. In my case it's a simple Spring Boot app. It has one REST resource and it's gonna return a simple string just to um, validate the services running, the services online. So what you have to do is making a Maven build. Once you have um, built the project, you have to make a Docker build for your um, ECR repository. You find these commands also in the readme. Once you have built your Docker image, you have to log in to AWS to be able to push your image. And once this succeeded, you will push your image to the ECR repository. So these are the pre-steps. By now we have a Docker container in our ECR repo. And let's have a look on the web console. On the ECS dashboard you not only can see your clusters but also your repositories and this is the repo. I was pushing my Spring Boot image to it and based on this image my task or my services are going to run. Now let's have a look in the region where we're going to install our cluster so by now we don't have any cluster here yet. You can cr of course create a cluster on the UI, on the web console, but I will um, create a cluster with CloudFormation and also the service, which is always a better idea. So we don't have a cluster, we don't have a task definition, we only have a Docker image, which we can use in our service. And now let's get started and install our cluster with CloudFormation. I'm going to select a CloudFormation stack which is a master stack. So I'm using a master stack and nested stacks to install the, com 
complete resources, which we have a closer look in a minute, with just one mouse click. Though this is not just one uh, cloud formation stick, as you can see, if we go on a refresh by now, you can see now the first nest stack was created, which is the VPC. Let's have a look on these cloud formation stacks. Um, so this is my master stack. And the first stack which is going to be created is a VPC. We don't have to take a closer look on this. You can also create a ECS cluster on your default VPC in your region, but I prefer to install my own VPC and this way it's much more easy to migrate to another account or to another region and um, you don't have to expect any surprises because some of your subnets are not available. So the next thing I'm going to install a load balancer to um, expose my microservice to the internet. I'm going to install the ECS cluster itself, which is in case of Fargate a real easy resource because we don't have to define EC2 instances. And finally, I'm going to install my Spring Boot service. So let's have a look on here. The VPC is in progress and this is gonna take a minute and let's have a short break until the cloud formation is done. Let's have a look on the service cloud formation stack itself. This is the most important part to understand Fargate. So we have some parameters here at the very top. What you have to define is your cluster. Of course, the service. You need a URL where you docker images and this is the docker image I have just pushed. There are some more parameters like for example container port and also important to define your CPU you're going to use and your memory. Then you have two important resources. It is the task definition which is going to wrap represent your docker container or your docker containers. You can also define here not only one container. Important here these parameters from the very top, the CPU, the memory, the image URL and the service which is going to um, be connected or associated to the task definition. The service can run one or more tasks. Um, depending on the parameters um, desired and maximum count. And the important thing of the service is the service name, of course, task definition and some network configurations. CloudFormation is completed by now and thanks to this tool, the whole infrastructure, including a VPC, let's have a look on the resources with subnets, private and public subnets, two load balancer, one public, one private, load balancer listeners, the ECS cluster, some roles for execution of the task, uh, ingress for the load balancers and the service itself was created in almost 10 minutes. You can create um, the same ECS cluster, a Fargate cluster and service um, you find the um, cloud formation stacks in my GitHub account. And now let's have a look on the ECS cluster itself. Maybe first let's have a look, short look on the service resources. So we have a task definition, of course, which is mandatory. We have a service itself. And we have what I created here are some CloudWatch alarms to scale in and scale out task we're gonna have a look on this on the ECS cluster. Now let's switch to ECS, take a closer look on our cluster. So this is our Fargate or our ECS cluster and we can see we have these two rows here. This is for the classical ECS, this is for Fargate and, and the Fargate part of our cluster is running one services with two tasks and 
let's have a closer look. So what is available here on information, you can see running services. In our case, I just deployed one service, Spring Boot, which is running with two tasks, which you can see also here on the next tab. Interesting part, in the opposite to classical EC2, you don't see here any EC2 instances. Fargate is in this way serverless. Also, of course, there is no uh, metrics for your EC2 instances. You have a tab about your scheduled task. I have not any scheduled task by now, so this is empty. And you have a last tab for tags, which is not this interesting. Let's have a look on closer look on our service. This is my just deployed Spring Boot service. So here you can find some general information. The target group name, container name, container port. You can have a look on your running task. By now there are running two tasks. Actually I defined desired count, desired count one. Let's have a look in the events and we find the answer. There seems to be a CPU utilization alarm created in 90%. And this means my scaling is working on the next tab. You have a information on the scale in and scale out policies. So um, first to know it's important which you have to define though there is a, a parameter minimum task and also maximum task which is defined in the cloud formation or a, you can define this um, on the UI also when you create this service on the web console. And in my case, if the CPU utilization is greater than 90%, there is going to be one task added. And in the opposite, if it's smaller than 70%, there is one task removed. The scaling appears only on the um, container level, on the task level, not on the cluster level, because the cluster itself is serverless. So you have also some information on deployments. I don't have any pipeline created for my Fargate task. Um, for my ECS example, I used to de create a pipeline. This is explained in one of my other videos. So this works the same for Fargate as for classical um, ECS. Metrics for the task, for the containers, are of course metrics available. This is also the important information for your billing because um, Fargate is gonna be calculated by your CPU and by your memory utilization, not by your cluster size. So you pay for your compute resources, not for your EC2 instances. Let's have a look on the um, differences between ECS and Fargate. So in classical ECS you have to define a real cluster with EC2 instances. For example, in this diagram, three instances. And on each instance was a um, ECS optimized machine image. There was a ECS agent installed, a Docker agent running. And on these EC2 instances were your tasks. So in the opposite, in Fargate, this is kind of serverless, at least for you. You don't have to define EC2 instances, you don't have to define your cluster size, you don't have to create scaling policies and triggers for your cluster, only for your task. So far a short overview on ECS Fargate. I hope you can create your own cluster and your own service based on these CloudFormation stacks. I will do one last thing. I created my cluster and my service with one mouse click. I'm gonna delete it with one click. And by deleting the master stack, all the nested stacks are going to be removed. Also though, it starts from the opposite direction. And in two or three minutes, everything is gone here. Thanks for listening and see you on the next, on the next lesson.